Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to show you the best attack helicopter loadout in Hardline. On the first slot you have the choice between the SMG, minigun and the M3M. The best pick is the SMG. It delivers the shortest time to kill on vehicles, very long burst rate and the greatest splash damage on infantry. Compared to it, the M3M overheats very very fast and it, even if you hit perfectly, you have to burst very carefully to not overheat it. It has only 2 splash damage per hit, while the SMG makes up to 8. The M3M might kill infantry a little faster, but it is so little that we don't really need to discuss about it. Nine. The minigun delivers the worst values here. High spread, no splash damage and the time to kill is on vehicles twice as high as the SMG. The only advantage it delivers is the time to kill on infantry in close range. So always pick the SMG with you. Let's talk about slot 2, the countermeasures. The flares work 3 out of 4 cases against dingers, but never deflect locked RPGs. The only countermeasure that deflect RPGs is the ECM. The problem here is the ECM works in less cases against the stinger than the flares do. You can increase your chances by flying a certain movement, but still you won't get the same chances as you get with the flares. To increase your chance against stingers during ECM, you should crop to the ground level and fly away to build the most distance you can get. That way the missile starts to circling around you and crashes into the ground, and you're safe from it now. If you're playing with a body, then you should use the extinguisher on the countermeasure spot. If the ECM fails, you can jump out of the helicopter and he can pull it off. Then the helicopter is on 37 HP again, it is fully controllable again and your chances are much higher to get out of the war zone and repair your helicopter than it would be without the extinguisher. The choice of slot 3 is not hard at all, the staff coding doesn't do anything. Also the aerator radius is only 100 meters around you. Normally you would equip the aerator to get notified if a chopper starts from the base, but with 100 meters range you will notice the enemy helicopter just when it is already too late for you. From now on I would differ if you fly alone or with a body of yours. If you fly with a body you should take the proxy scan with you. It delivers a 45 meter scan of moving or running enemies on the ground level. The altitude difference doesn't matter because it is built as a cylinder. You gonna should take the gyro stabilizer. Once you're disabled, your helicopter remains fully controllable with full engine power. If you fly solo, you should take the gyro stabilizer with you. This way you can fly behind cover once you're disabled and you don't have to land in the war zone. After testing all gunner optics, the result's pretty clear as well. The gunner's minigun has such a high spread that you can't fight targets that you would only see with zoom optics. So this optic only gives you the chance to detect targets on high range, but not to fight them. The worst choice here is thermal optics. The whole surrounding is white and enemies easily get covered by objects behind them. The best choice here is IRNV. If you can see someone highlighted with the IRNV, he is in your effective gun range. The choice of the last slot is more about personal preferences. If your mate already flies with frog scan, then this is not really an option. The air cooler is minimizing the overheating time. Once you're overheated, it needs like only one or two seconds until you can shoot again. On the other hand, the autoloader just brings you a longer burst time. So it's only really about preferences if you want to shoot longer or you want your cooldown shorter. This is it for today, I hope you liked it. Leave a like and a comment and see you around next time.